Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's interesting topic is development of the respiratory tract. So let's understand this development. If you are new to our channel, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the latest notification of videos. So without much delay, this is an embryo. It's in the form of a shape of a disc. Okay, ventral to the embryo. There is a cavity called as yolk sac. Dorsal to the embryo, there is a huge cavity called as amniotic cavity. So what happens at fourth week of introitum life, the embryo which is disc shape now starts becoming cylindrical shape. How is that possible? Because at fourth week of introitum life, there will be four folds. At the cranial most aspect, there is one head fold. At the caudal most aspect, there is one tail fold. Now in between the cranial and the caudal aspect, that is in the middle portion, there will be two lateral folds. Imagine you are wearing one jacket. Okay. So when you wear the jacket, when you put your arms into both the sleeves together, how the jacket will come forward like that. The two lateral folds. So at fourth week of intrauterine life, there is one head fold, one tail fold and a pair of lateral folds. So what happens? When these folds develop, see the yolk sac which was there ventral to the embryo, what is written short form YS yolk sac, after the formation of the head fold, tail fold and the two lateral fold, the yolk sac is drawn within the embryo to form the gut, GUT. The gut is future give rise to gastrointestinal tract, that is a GIT. So what happens to the yolk sac? It is now divided into three parts, foregut, midgut and hindgut. So let's understand in examination how to write this. That part of the yolk sac which is drawn within the head fold is called as foregut. Whereas that part of the yolk sac which is drained, which is now within the tail fold is now called as hindgut. So what is midgut? That portion of the yolk sac which is in the middle between the two lateral folds to lateral fold that's called as midgut so foregut midgut and hindgut are the three parts of the yolk sac which is now drawn into the embryo which later gives rise to the git or the gastrointestinal tract now what happens this is the endoderm okay the yolk sac is the endoderm from the foregut there is one diverticulum there is one out poaching which is growing see like this that diverticulum which grows from the lower part of the foregut that is just behind the pharynx or oral cavity will be there in which tongue is there just behind that one tube is there it's called as a pharynx just inferior to that there is one diverticulum growing from the floor of the foregut the diverticulum is called as laryngotracheal diverticulum this is the most important statement and you have to remember this word laryngo tracheal diverticulum is a diverticulum arising from the ventral aspect or the anterior aspect of the foregut. So what happens to this laryngotracheal diverticulum subsequently? This endodermal diverticulum called as laryngotracheal diverticulum initially it is short later it deepens once it deepens it is becoming elongated later it becomes bifid like a snake's tongue it will become splitted into two tips initially it will deepen later it becomes bifid ultimately the lower aspect give rise to one bud called as lung bud so what happens to laryngotracheal diverticulum it is an endodermal diverticulum initially it is short subsequently it deepens ultimately the tip becomes bifid so that bifid portion the lowermost portion of laryngotracheal diverticulum gives rise to something called as lung buds so what is the fate of this laryngotracheal diverticulum? The upper portion of the, we will see that, the upper portion of the laryngotracheal diverticulum give rise to larynx. The lower portion of the laryngotracheal diverticulum give rise to trachea. So how to remember this? See the name itself is laryngotracheal diverticulum. So you can know that laryngotracheal, meaning it should give rise to larynx and trachea. The lowermost part, the lowermost part which has become bifid has given rise to lung bud. So what does it give rise to? Obviously lung buds give rise to lungs. 
so in summary the respiratory passage is coming from the endoderm of foregut what is foregut that part of the yolk sac within the head fold of the embryo is called as foregut at fourth week of intrauterine life in the floor of the foregut there is a diverticulum called as laryngotracheal diverticulum this diverticulum initially is short later it elongates and then it becomes bifid to give rise to lung bud the upper portion of laryngotracheal diverticulum give rise to larynx the middle portion give rise to trachea or the lower portion give rise to trachea lower most portion give rise to bifid portion called as lung bud which give rise to lung so if you want to know the details the larynx has got cartilage the epiglottis of the larynx is derived from caudal half of hypobranchial eminence you can see my video on tongue you will understand how the epiglottis is developed the thyroid cartilage is developed from third and fourth arch third and fourth branchial arch or pharyngeal arch whereas the cricoid cartilage the ring shaped cartilage is derived from sixth arch okay the tracheal rings are also developed from this laryngotracheal diverticulum that is endodermal the lung bud initially these all these are solid okay later it undergoes glandular formation in the in the last stage it undergoes canalization so initially solid lung bud later becomes glandular later becomes pseudo glandular and then ultimately canalized so the bottom of the lungs will be bunch of grapes each lung contains 300 million alveolus so of course inside the alveolus surfactant will be there lecithin sphingomyelin so all this will maintain the patency of the alveolus by reducing surface tension so this is about the development of respiratory tract okay especially the larynx trachea and lung if you want to know the development of nose nose is developed from nasal pit the lower part of this head fold will develop two nasal pits the nasal pits deepen to give rise to nasal cavities and the endodermal pouches will give rise to pharynx so entirely the respiratory tract is derived from endoderm of the foregut from a diverticulum called as laryngotracheal diverticulum thank you for watching and learning from logic medico kindly subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel and don't forget to press the thumbs up icon share this video with your friends thank you once again for watching and learning from logic medico